In this video, we're going to talk about how we can derive the formula for the inertia of a solid sphere. So let's begin. We're going to break up the sphere into cross sections. So what I have here is a very thin disk. And I'm just going to draw it like this. So this disk, if you draw this way, looks like a cylinder with the radius lowercase r and the height h. The volume of a cylinder is the area times the height. So this cross-sectional area is the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So we get the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. Now in this problem, the distance between this point and the edge of the disk is r, lowercase r. The distance between the center of the sphere and the center of the disk, that's going to be x. And the distance between the center of the sphere and this point of interest, that is going to be the radius of the sphere. So what we have here is a right triangle. So using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we could say that x squared plus little r squared is equal to big r squared. So solving for little r squared, we can subtract both sides by x squared, and we get r squared is big r squared minus x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that r is the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now, going back to this equation, if we take the derivative of both sides, we get that dv is equal to pi r squared times the derivative of h is 1 dh, or simply dh. Notice that the radius of the disk is constant, so we don't differentiate r squared because that's not a variable, doesn't change. Now, dh is basically the same as dx. If this is x, then this part right here, let me put that in a different color, this part here is dx, which is equivalent to dh, which is just a small segment which will represent the height of that cylinder. So we could say that dv is going to be pi r squared dx. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace r squared with what it's equal to. So we have dv is equal to pi times r squared minus x squared dx. So at this point, we can get rid of this. Now, density is mass over volume. If we multiply both sides by V, we get that the mass is rho times the volume, density times volume. Now, the density of the sphere, we're assuming that it's going to be uniform throughout. So the density is going to be constant throughout the volume of the sphere. So taking the derivative of both sides, we're going to have dm rho dv because the density is going to be constant. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace dv with what we have here. So it's dm is equal to rho times pi times r squared minus x squared dx. Now, let's save that equation. Now, here we have the shape of the disk. The inertia of a disk is basically the equivalent to the inertia of a solid cylinder, which is one half 
mr squared. Now, I have another video on YouTube that explains how to calculate the inertia of a hollow cylinder, which you could use to find the inertia of a solid cylinder. For those of you who want to see how we can derive this formula, you can look at that video on YouTube. So I'm going to start with that. Now, since we're dealing with the radius of the disk, which we define to be lowercase r, the inertia of that disk is going to be 1 half m little r squared. Now, I'm going to take the derivative. And we should use lowercase m to make sure that it matches with this one. Now keep in mind, this radius of the disk is constant. So if I take the derivative of both sides, I get di is equal to 1 half. The derivative of m is going to be dm. And r squared is going to be constant, so we're just going to leave it as r squared. So right now we have di is 1 half r squared dm. Now, r squared, we can go ahead and replace that with big R squared minus x, big R squared minus x squared. So this is going to be 1 half big R squared minus x squared. And then dm, we can replace it with what we have here. So it's rho times pi times R squared minus x squared dx. So we have rho pi over 2. These two are identical, so we can write it like this. r squared minus x squared squared dx. Now, if we take the integral of both sides, we're going to get that the inertia is going to be pi times rho over 2 and now we can integrate it from negative r to r, or we could integrate it from zero to r and multiply it by two. I'm gonna integrate it from zero to r and then just multiply that by two. It's gonna require less math. So we're basically integrating the right half from zero to r so we'll get the inertia for this side. If we double it, then we get everything. So by multiplying by 2, it makes the algebra a lot easier. So the inertia is going to be pi times rho integral from 0 to r and I'm going to expand this r squared minus x squared it's squared so I'm going to write it out two times so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to foil r squared times r squared is r to the fourth and then this is negative r squared x squared and this is another negative r squared x squared so that makes two r squared x squared and then negative x squared times negative x squared is positive x to the fourth so notice that we have a dx here so what that means is that r is constant but we're integrating the x variable So what's the integral of r to the fourth? It's not r to the fifth over five because we're integrating it with respect to x. So r to the fourth is simply like a constant, like three, five, or negative eight. So when we integrate this, all we need to do is add an x variable to it. So it's simply r to the fourth times x. 
Now for the next term, the 2r squared is a constant, so we're not going to do anything with that. We need to integrate x squared using the power rule. We're going to add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that number. So for x to the 4th, it's going to be x to the 5th over 5. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to r. So first, let's replace every x variable we see with r. So this becomes r to the 4th times r, which is r to the 5th power. Next, we have negative 2 over 3 r squared, this becomes r cubed, r squared times r cubed is r to the fifth power, and this becomes r to the fifth power over 5, which is plus 1 over 5 r to the fifth power. Now all of that will be subtracted by once we plug in 0 for each of these. So this will be 0, 0, and 0, so that's just simply 0. Now, in order to combine these terms, we need to get common denominators. So the common denominator for 3 and 5 is going to be 15. I'm going to multiply this by 15 over 15. So we have 15 over 15, r to the fifth power. To get the 3 to 15, I need to multiply 2 thirds by 5 over 5. So it becomes negative 10 over 15, r to the 5. Now, to get to 5 to, the, to a 15, I need to multiply this fraction by 3 over 3. So it's 3 over 15, r to the 5th power. So 15 minus 10 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So we have 8 over 15 r to the fifth power. So that's 8 pi times rho over 15 r to the fifth power. So let's save this answer. We're going to modify it a bit soon. Now we know that the mass of an object is the density of that object times the volume. Now, what is the volume of a sphere? The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r to the third. So notice that little m would represent the mask of the, the disk that we had, that small cross-sectional disk. Capital M represents the mass of the entire sphere. Lowercase r represents the radius of the disk. Capital R represents the radius of the sphere. So right now we're dealing with the mass of the entire sphere. So this is going to be the volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we're going to replace V with 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so we get the mass of the sphere is 4 pi times rho over 3 r to the third. So what we want to do is we want to get this expression in terms of m, that is, the mass of the sphere. So we have inertia is 8 pi rho over 15 times r to the fifth power. Now 8, I'm going to write it as 4 times 2. And 15, I'm going to write it as 5 times 3. r to the 5th, I'm going to write it as r cubed times r squared. So I'm going to write 4 pi rho over 3. And then r cubed which is what we have here. And then what's left over, I'm going to write it. So 2 over 5 r squared.
So because these are identical, I can now replace this with the mass of the sphere. So we get m times 2 over 5 r squared. In other words, the inertia is 2 over 5 times the mass of the sphere times the, r, the radius of the sphere squared. So that's how we can derive the formula for the inertia of a solid sphere. So it's 2 fifths. I'm going to write a better 5. My 5s, they don't always look that great. So that is the inertia of a solid sphere. It's 2 over 5 mr squared.